Dear students, welcome back to the Commercial Mathematics and Statistics class for HS second year. I am class to I am class to arithmetic minor formula properties of arithmetic mean nor hoite aram hokore bok hoisu Arithmetic mean has some mathematical properties which has got immense use in our day to day life and so it is very important that we understand these properties what they actually imply. So going to the first property it is stated this way the sum of the deviations of the observations from their arithmetic mean is equal to 0. This is the statement of the first property which says the sum of the de deviations of the observations from their arithmetic mean is equal to 0. So, symbolically, we can write it as, supposing we have a varied value x, we have a variable x, which take values x1, x2, etc. up to xn. And let, as we all know, the arithmetic mean is denoted by x bar. All right. That is for the varied value x, taking values x1, x2, etc. up to xn. That is, we have got n observations and x bar denotes their arithmetic mean. Then according to this property, what should we have? Then summation of x bar minus x is equal to 0. That is, if we take deviations of the items from the arithmetic mean, that is x1, sorry, x bar minus x1 plus x bar minus x2 plus etc. up to x bar minus xn. We are taking deviations of each of the items x1, x2, etc. up to xn from the arithmetic mean x bar and if we sum them up the summation is always going to be equal to 0. This is the first property of arithmetic mean. The next property of arithmetic mean is this we go to the second property. The second property says the sum of the squares, the sum of the squares of the deviations of the observations from arithmetic mean is the minimum is the minimum yes the statement is the sum of the squares of the deviations of the observations from arithmetic mean is the minimum the meaning is that if we write symbolically you will understand symbolically again just like the previous property, if we consider let x be a variable taking values x1, x2, etc. up to 
xn and let their arithmetic mean be denoted by x bar and now we shall also consider a which is an arbitrary constant that is a is any constant number any by any constant we may refer to it as any other measure of average that is it might be median which we will learn later it might be mode it might be geometric mean it might be harmonic mean any other measure or it might be any other constant all right it might be assumed mean whatever in that case what will happen if we take the deviations of the items from x bar and we take the deviations of the items from any arbitrary constant and square them up and then add them we will see that the value which we get by taking the deviations from x bar and squaring will be smaller than the other expression that is then by this property what we have summation over x bar minus x is minimum is less than equal to summation over x minus x bar minus sorry yes a minus x that is and we are taking the square of the items that is we are taking the deviations like like the previous property we are taking the ones we are taking the deviations from mean and in the other one we are taking deviation from any other arbitrary constant and we are squaring those values and adding them up all right and then this expression will always give a lesser value a minimum value than the value which we will get from the expression on the right hand side this is the second property of arithmetic mean i think the first two properties are clear to you we move on to the third very very important property of arithmetic mean the third property says arithmetic mean am is in is not independent is not independent of change of origin and scale change of origin and scale very very important property all right so what does this imply there are two words change of origin and change of scale change of origin refers to change in the varied value x so let us write symbolically yes symbolically what happens we will take up different cases i just give you an idea supposing x is a variable taking values x1 x2 etc up to xn what does change in origin implies change in origin implies you are either adding something to all the values say a constant c or you are subtracting a constant c to all the items all right that is when you add or subtract a constant value to all the items under x we call it change of origin and then this is case 1 case 2 is if you multiply all the values of variable x by a constant c1 c say c into x1 c into x2 etc up to c into xn or you divide the constant x1 uh, sorry the variable value x1 by c x2 by c etc up to xn by c these two cases where you are multiplying or dividing the given value of x by some constant property constant value rather constant value c then the arithmetic mean also gets changed orthat ami jodi x man tor logot jikunu eta constant 
যদি আমি প্লাস এড করো যোগ করো বা বিয়োগ করো বা পূরণ বা হরণ করো প্রত্যেকটো ভ্যালুর লগত যোগ করো বা বিয়োগ করো পূরণ করো বা হরণ করো তাহলে কি হব এয়া হরণ করেছো ইয়াতে পূরণ করে দেখো এয়া পূরণ করেছো প্রত্যেকটো এক্সর ভ্যালুর লগত ইয়াতে হরণ করেছো প্রত্যেকটো এক্সর ভ্যালুর লগত তেতিয়া কি হব এক্সর যুক্ত এরিথমেটিক মিন আসলে সেই মিনট কি হব সলনি হয়ে যাব এটা সলনি তো কেন ধরনে হব এই প্রপার্টিরপর আমি শিকবল চেষ্টা করি প্রথমতে আমি লো সিম্বলিকালি লেট এক্স বি অ ভেরিয়েবল টেকিং ভ্যালুজ এক্স ওয়ান এক্স টু এটসেট্রা টু এক্স এন এন্ড লেট দ্য এরিথমেটিক মিন বি ডিনোটেড বাই এক্স বার তো আমার প্রথম কেস তো কি হব আমি প্রথমতে চেঞ্জ অফ অরিজিনের কথালে যাব ইফ অল দ্য ভ্যালুজ অফ এক্স বিকাম লাইক দিস আমি প্রত্যেকটো এক্সর লগত যদি সি প্লাস করো সি ইজ এ কনস্টেন্ট বা মাইনাস করো কমা এক্স টু প্লাস মাইনাস সি এক্স এন প্লাস মাইনাস সি উই আর এডিং এন্ড সাবট্রেক্টিং সি টু অল দ্য ভ্যালুজ অফ দ্য ভেরিয়েবল এক্স দেন ফর দিস নিউ সিজ এই একটা নতুন সিজ হল এই সিজটোর কারণে এক্স বার উইল বি দ্য এরিথমেটিক মিন উইল বি উইল বি এক্স বার প্লাস সি অর্থাৎ যুক্ত সিজ এক্সর এক্স ওয়ান এক্স টু এটসেট্রা টু এক্স এন আসে তারে যদি এরিথমেটিক মিন টু এক্স বার হয় আমি যেটা প্লাস বা মাইনাস করিম তাহলে কি হব এরিথমেটিক মিন যদি প্লাস করো অরিজিনেল মিনটোর সি প্লাস হব যদি মাইনাস করো তাহলে অরিজিনেল এক্স বারর কনস্টেন্ট সি টু মাইনাস হব দিস ইজ দ্য ফার্স্ট পার্ট দ্যাট ইজ চেঞ্জ অফ অরিজিন এ এম ইজ নট ইন্ডিপেন্ডেন্ট অফ চেঞ্জ অফ অরিজিন টকিং অবাউট চেঞ্জ অফ স্কেল ইফ উই গো টু দ্য সেকেন্ড কেস উই আর গোয়িং টু চেঞ্জ অফ স্কেল নাও দ্যাট ইজ ইফ এক্স ওয়ান এক্স টু এটসেট্রা টু এক্স এন আর এন ভেরিয়েট ভ্যালুজ অফ দ্য ভেরিয়েবল এক্স এক্স বার বিং দেয়ার এরিথমেটিক মিন and now we have a new series in which we are multiplying all the values of the variable x by uh, the constant c then the new arithmetic mean for this series that is arithmetic mean for the new series will be c times x bar original mean multiplied by the constant c Similarly, taking the third case, if all the items get divided by C, if all the items get divided by C, all right, the new series is this with arithmetic mean X bar, uh, sorry, the original series is this, the new series is taken by dividing all the items by the constant C. then the arithmetic mean of this new series will be x bar divided by c so this is the property of arithmetic mean which says that it is not independent of change of origin as well as change of scale this is a very very important property and in your exam you get sums where you just have one mark you'll be given a series and then you will given a new you will also be given the mean of that particular series and then you'll be given a new series in which either the values get added or the values get subtracted or multiplied or divided and you're asked to find the arithmetic mean for the new series then by making use of this property you can do it very easily it will be just a one mark question So you cannot spend time doing the entire sum but you just make use of this property you will know 
what will be the answer moving on to the fourth property another very important property we call it the property of combined mean here uh, we have to know something about uh, dividing a particular population into say some different sub population some sub groups all right that is supposing we have a population consisting of n number of items there are n number of observations in the population all right and then what we do we subdivide this n number of items into say some subgroups say n1 and n2 supposing first let us consider just two subgroups n1 being the number of observations in the first subgroup and n2 being the number of items in the second subgroup all right also let x bar x bar be the mean of the entire population taken as a whole gute to homostir zitu arithmetic mean hetu kami x bar buli koso that is x bar is the arithmetic mean of the whole population লগতে আমাৰ হাতত যদি এনেকুৱা ইনফৰমেশ্যনো আছে যে x1 bar is the arithmetic mean of the first subgroup and x2 bar you also have some information about the mean of the second subgroup that is x2 bar is the arithmetic mean of the second subgroup by sub population whatever you call all right now with this much of information we should be able to find the combined mean sometimes when this is not given to us all right if we have the values for x1 bar and x2 bar that is we know about the mean of the sub populations or sub groups and now we are interested in finding the arithmetic mean of the entire group taken as a whole all right so just to make it all the more easier so let us say in a classroom of cmst class we have girl students as well as boy students all right so let n1 be the number of girls in the classroom n2 be the number of boys in the classroom all right let x1 bar be the mean height that is arithmetic mean mean height of the girls and x2 bar be the mean height of the boys i have this much of information and suddenly now i want to know about the mean height of the girls and the boys taken together as one class all right so instead of recalculating the entire uh, you know the mean i mean finding uh, mean for the entire group again all over again by making use of this much information we can find out what is known as the combined mean or combined arithmetic mean arithmetic mean is sometimes referred to as mean only mean okay then we will denote it by x double bar since x bar implies mean so x double bar will imply combined mean all right this is the combined mean and the formula for combined mean is given by n1 times x1 bar plus n2 times x2 bar divided by n1 plus n2 that is with information about the sub populations in a particular population we can find the mean of the entire population which we call 
the combine arithmetic mean or combine mean simply. We can extend this formula to any number of subpopulations. Supposing we have there are supposing there are k number of subpopulations k is any number if we have divided a particular population into k subpopulations or k subgroups then what will this formula look like you see then x double bar will be equal to n1 times x1 bar n2 times x2 bar etc up to n k times x k bar divided by n1 plus n2 plus etc up to n k. So, this is again a very very important property of arithmetic mean and this property suggests that arithmetic mean can be you know uh, put for further algebraic treatment. We are multiplying by some constant, we are adding them, dividing, yes, that was a proper characteristic of arithmetic mean, implying arithmetic mean can undergo different kind of further algebraic treatment. So, this is a very important property, we have to do sums using this property to which we will come later. So, these are the four very, very important properties of arithmetic mean for which you have to know the mathematical implication. For combined mean you get sums up to 5 marks and for the other properties you will get questions small sums consisting of 1 to 2 marks. So with this I think the discussion on arithmetic mean uh, can be said to be almost completed sums are there we will take up applications later after learning some more measures. Now we have to know little bit about the merits and demerits of arithmetic mean. What are the merits? The first merit is it is rigidly defined. We go back to the characteristics. It is rigidly defined. The definition is very rigid. You have a specific formula for it. Arithmetic mean Ulia Borbabe, Man Ulia Borbabe, at a nearest of formula. Logote ki asa, it is simple and easy to understand. Hokolwe a formula to Bebohar kori palai, ki kori bo pare, teoloke, kinami married discuss kori aso, merits of a m. Simple to Calculate and easy to understand. A property to a characteristic to arithmetic mean satisfy kore. A matra is to fourth property, last property to poor hilo. Tarpora ki gompalu the arithmetic mean can be you know applied into further mathematical or algebraic treatment. It can be put to further algebraic treatment. This is also a merit of arithmetic mean. So, these are some of the merits going to the demerits. Demerits consist of the fact that arithmetic mean sometimes get unduly affected by extreme values. Amar zudi ata series of pasta value diya se for the variable x, x1, x2, etc. up to x5, x1, x2, x3, x4 and f5. These are all values, okay. I am not writing the values. So, what happens? Sometimes if two, say two or three of these values are in the extremities, either very high values or very low values, in that case arithmetic mean gets unduly affected. So, this is a drawback or a demerit of arithmetic mean. Now, we are talking about the demerits, alright. The second demerit of arithmetic mean is such that we had talked about open n classes that day. Open n classes, I think you remember when class intervals are of the form say below 10. All right, and then you have 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and then you have above 40. This is an open n class. 
in that case what happens when you have open ended intervals you have open end classes it is difficult to calculate arithmetic mean why is it difficult because how will you find out x here the mid value mid value is lower limit plus upper limit divided by 2 upper limit is 10 no doubt what is the lower limit below 10 is it 9 is it 0 is it 5 so it becomes very difficult usually for practical purposes we take it to be equal to the other given classes but that is just a practical solution mathematically speaking it is difficult to find arithmetic similarly here when you say above 40 40 is the lower limit what will be the upper limit is it 50 is it 60 it is 100 or is it 1000 we do not know so in such cases arithmetic mean sometimes might give us erroneous results this is another demerit of arithmetic mean but looking into the usefulness the simplicity and its use and the uh, easy mode of calculation and uh, the uh, you know the very uh, maximum uh, you may say maximum use of this uh, mean uh, of this measure arithmetic mean is considered to be the best measure of central tendency or best measure of average ami arithmetic mean ok hokolu ami baki bor measure porim he hokolu measure ot ke hokolu manot koi ami arithmetic mean to kami bhal boli kosu best boli kosu ki hor karone amar jiketa characteristics asile tare gute keta almost gute keta characteristic he satisfy korise apart from two that it gets unduly affected by extreme values and it becomes difficult for use in case when we have extreme you know we have open ended classes otherwise it is very very important and uh, we use it in our day to day life knowingly or unknowingly so as such arithmetic mean can be considered to be the best measure of central tendency in your exam you might get a question what are averages you get it as a tail question usually what are averages why is arithmetic mean considered to be the best measure then you have to mention all the characteristics of the ideal measure of central tendency which we had already learned and say that arithmetic mean satisfies this 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 does not satisfy one or two and that is why we consider to be the one of the it is the best measure rather all right so this is all about arithmetic mean so now we are fully equipped with arithmetic mean we know its definition we know its formula we know the properties we know merits demerits all right so now after learning two more measures we shall go to the to sums relating to arithmetic mean how to find arithmetic mean all right so arithmetic mean is a mathematical measure i think you remember mathematical and positional measures we had discussed all right so we learned about the mathematical measure arithmetic mean now we have two more measures geometric mean and harmonic mean under mathematical mean we shall do that later let us go to the positional measures now the first positional measure being median it is a positional measure i think you remember why we call it positional yes arithmetic mean cannot be found graphically that is one of the demerits you can say but median and mode can be found graphically without calculating also and that is why it they are known as positional averages so median or that my dog median e ki kore eta distribution ok homane du bhagot bibhokto kore du bhagot bhogai so a median is what it is the middle most value all right if we have a distribution where x takes say values x1 x2 x3 etc up to say xn ami koselo central tendency measure bur e mas bhagot thake central most part median to ko thakibo exactly in the middle 
একদম মাজতে থাকা যে ভ্যালু যে এই ডিস্ট্রিবিউশনটুক সমানে দুভাগত ভগাব ইয়েস ফিফটি পার্সেন্ট বিলো মিডিয়ান ফিফটি পার্সেন্ট আবাফ মিডিয়ান অলরাইট সো মিডিয়ান ইজ নাথিং বাট দ্য মিডল মোস্ট ভ্যালু একবারে মাজতে থাকা যে ভ্যালু যে মেজার দ্যাট ইজ নোন এজ মিডিয়ান all right so median is also sometimes referred to as a partition value it is referred to as a partition value partition mane ki ji he ekhon yate partition create korise kene kwa dhoronor partition create korise je tar partition khonor tolot 50 shotangho observations ba items bo thakibo আর এই পার্টিশনখনের উপর তার মানে মিডিয়ানোর উপর বাকি পঞ্চাশ শতাংশ অবজারভেশনস থাকিব। এটা আমি যেহেতু পার্টিশন ভ্যালু কথাটা কলো মিডিয়ানোর ডেফিনেশন যার আগতে অকমান পার্টিশন ভ্যালুনো কি সেইখিনি আমি অলমান চাই ল তো পার্টিশন ভ্যালু আকো তিনিবিধ পার্টিশন ভ্যালু আছে আমি মিডিয়ানলে ঘুরি আহিম অকমান পার্টিশন ভ্যালুর বিষয়ে কে দিস পার্টিশন ভ্যালুজ আর অফ থ্রি টাইপস কোয়ারটাইলস ডিসাইলস এন্ড পার্সেন্টাইলস অলরাইট So let us take a frequency curve. We are taking a symmetric curve, all right? Median to amikosu, middle most value. So median will be here. All right? So below median, we have 50% of the observations. Above median, we have 50% of the observations. Okay? So what are quartiles? মিডিয়ানে দুভাগত ভগালে কোয়ারটাইলসে চারি ভাগত ভগাব কোয়ারটাইলস আর সচ পার্টিশন ভ্যালুজ হুইজ ডিভাইডস এ ডিস্ট্রিবিউশন ইন্টু ফোর ইকুয়েল পার্টস কোয়ারটাইলসে ফোর পার্টস ভগায় চারিটা ভাগত ভগায় আর কেটা কোয়ারটাইল আছে আমার আমি চাই লো কেসেস কিউ ওয়ান মিডিয়ান টু হোল কিউ টু এটু হল কিউ থ্রি সমানে চারিটা ভাগত যে পার্টিশন ভ্যালুয়ে ভগায় সেই মেজারটুক আমি কোয়ারটাইলস বলে কো আমার কোয়ারটাইলস কেটা আছে তিনটা কোয়ারটাইল আছে কিউ ওয়ান কিউ টু আর কিউ থ্রি দেয়ার আর থ্রি কোয়ারটাইলস এন্ড দ্য সেকেন্ড কোয়ারটাইল কইনসাইডস উইথ মিডিয়ান দ্যাট ইজ মিডিয়ান ইজ ইকুয়েল টু কিউ টু কিউ টু এন্ড মিডিয়ান আর সেম all right so below q1 what is the percentage of observations below q1 it will be 25% above q1 it will be 75% obviously median and q2 are same so it is 50 and 50 below q3 we have got 75% observations and above q3 we have got 25% observations this is quartiles similarly there is another measure called deciles deciles divide a distribution into 10 equal parts deciles will divide a distribution into 10 equal parts all right so and okay there will be 10 equal parts first decile will be denoted by d1 second decile by d2 etc up to fifth decile by d5 all right and this is d9 all right so deciles divide a distribution into 10 equal parts 
equal hop dot to kigose, ten equal parts, four equal parts, janeke, yate ten equal parts, and there are nine deciles D1, D2, D3, etc., up to D9. Okay, and then we go to percentiles. Just like quartiles and deciles, which divide the distribution into four parts and ten parts respectively. Percentiles divide the distribution into hundred equal parts. Percentiles divide a distribution into hundred equal parts. All right, so we represent them by P1, P2, etc., up to P99. So if we have P1 here, P2 here, P3 here, etc., up to median will be equal to P50, and then you have P51, etc., up to P99. There will be 99 percentile values, and it will divide. The entire distribution into 100 equal parts. So this is very very important. You have to remember what partition values are and here a very very important question is what is the relationship of these partition values with median? That the relationship between the different values that is partition values with median median that is M is equal to the second quartile Q2 is equal to the fifth decile D5 and the 58th percentile P50. This is a very very important relation which you should always remember Khodai monotrakhi ba say median or logot baki bur partition value ki relation ase median is nothing but Q2 and it is also equal to D5, the fifth decile and the 58th percentile. So regarding partition value and its calculation we shall come later again but now we go back to median. This was just an idea about what partition value is all about because median is also a partition value. Back to median. Moidhoma. So we may say median may be defined as the middlemost value, as the middlemost value of a distribution which divides the distribution into two equal halves. Ek ke bara majote thaka zito value, hetu ke ami median bolli ko. So if this is a frequency curve, this is our median will be here. All right, it divides the distribution into two equal halves. Usually, it is denoted by M or in some books, you will find it as M E. All right, so this is the definition. Now, just like arithmetic mean, we will try to know how to calculate median. That is, we will learn the formula. Median, ami kene dhorne, calculate coriolium for different kind of series that is discrete frequency, discrete non-frequency as well as continuous distribution. So, we will take them up one by one. The discrete non-frequency distribution. Right, discrete non-frequency distribution. What is the form? The form is like this. K 
Can you call it discrete non frequency distribution to the cut? This is the structure. So, x or kisuman value dia se. The median ulia bo karne ami ki korim. Alright. So, we will follow an algorithm. Ami step by step kori jam. Ami ki korim. Step 1. Step 1 not ami ki kori bo legibo. We have to arrange the given series in order of magnitude. Arrange the distribution or series in order of magnitude. Alright, that is in ascending order or in descending order. Dangoro pa horule, ba horur pa dangoro le, ami x or man kinik hozai lom. In step 2, find n. n mane number of observations. Ki man ta observations dia ase. I am here n to go new liam. The x or a marhatot pasta, sene dosta, sene pundhorta, sene bista, se kimanta value x or dia se he to ami ulielum. Find n, where n is the number of observations. Step 3 Observe whether n is even or odd. Is ami n ulialo, tar pisot ami sabolegibo, n to even ne odd. Jogmo ne odd jogmo. Take a sir. It is step four odd amar duta bos to ahibo. Case one. When n is odd. Second case to obo when n is even. We go to that later. So first, let us find out what happens when n is odd. All right. So when n is odd, supposing we have values of x like this: x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, say x7. Hatta value dia se. See to ami odd or kotha ko. So ami odd number of values lo. So here n is equal to 7 which is odd already ami first step to kori loisu ami thori loisu je x1 or pa x7 oleke ami in order of magnitude dangor pa horule ba horur pa dangorole ami hojai loisu tar bisot dekhisu je hatta observation dia ase odd number of observations iti amar majot kuntu value hobo taller e tinta jodi bad diu Upor or tinta bad dilu. X4 is the median value. Value of X4 will be median. Alright. But etu yata hatta ase karna me mukhe mukhe uliye su. Zudi amar tini hot atrista thake kuntu value hobo. Yes. When you have large numbers, we have to have a formula. So formula to kene kwa. So we shall write down. In step 4, when n is odd, what we do is. So, in step 4, case 1, where n is odd, the formula for finding median will be m equal to value of n plus 1 by 2 it observation. Value of n plus 1 by 2 it observation where n refers to the number of observations. Taking the illustration which we were discussing, there were 7 observations plus 1 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. So, value of the fourth observation that is x4 will give us the median value. Alright, now what will happen when n is even? So, let us take the second case, case 2, when n is even. Amar hatat zudi, 
even number of observations take x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 supposing there are eight observations here n is equal to 8 which is even all right so if we have even number of observations by inspection what should median be median has to be the middlemost value all right so these there are three values this side on the lower end three values here in the upper end and in the middle we have got two values which will be the median value all right if we want to use our common sense median should be somewhere here actually talking about the position jehetu ekebare major value to hobo lage median to ekhinte hobo lagisen to ekhinte amar value na x4 aru x5 ase so what will this the value over here how will we find it it will be the arithmetic mean of these two values all right so in case of even number of observations median will be given by arithmetic mean of n by 2 it n n plus 2 by plus n by 2 plus 1 it observations the money a duta g duta value major taki bo him duta value rami arithmetic means would you will you that will give us median in case where number of observations is even take a say so this can be written as arithmetic means here to duta value William it is 1 by 2 n by 2 it observation plus n by 2 plus 1 it observation major observation duta plus kore divided by 2 kore le we will get the arithmetic mean of these two values all right the middlemost values this is the formula for finding arithmetic uh, sorry finding median in case there are even number of observations this is all about finding median in case of a non frequency distribution next we go to a discrete frequency distribution the second formula how will we find median in case of a discrete frequency distribution in case of a discrete frequency distribution the structure is like this dekhat kene kwa hoi discrete frequency distribution con x takes values x1 x2 etc up to xn with respective frequencies f1 f2 etc up to fn such that summation of f is equal to capital N. Total of frequency is always denoted by capital N. Any question frequency distributions would be a mark dia thakke. Titiya ami ki dore median uliya. Titiya mark ki kore balaybo. We have to construct a cumulative frequency distribution table. I think you remember what is cumulative frequency distribution. Yes, so for finding median, we will construct a cumulative frequency distribution table. All right, so this is a table of cumulative frequency distribution where we will have three columns x, f and cumulative frequency all right below this given values we will also find the total all right I think you know what is cumulative frequency this will be f this will be uh, sorry f1 second one will be f1 plus f2 third one will be f1 plus f2 plus f3 and so on the last one will be summation of all the frequencies the last cumulative frequency will be n this is how we construct the 
cumulative frequency distribution table. Then we have to find here n by 2 ki man hoy man. So the n supposing amar so the n hundred ahi se n by 2 ki man hobo hundred by 2 will give us 50. A 52 ulivar pisada mi ki korim we will look for cumulative frequency just greater than n by 2. Tamane just greater than 50 supposing. Haru g2 z2 value te goi palai he to ami pam z 50 ke just dangor value to jote pam tari corresponding z2 value hobo that will be the median for that particular distribution. Supposing we have a discrete frequency distribution where values of x and f are given to you. The values of x are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and the respective frequencies are 4, 7, 15, 8, 6 and 3. And you are asked to find the median. So since this is a discrete frequency distribution, how will we find median? First of all, we shall construct a cumulative frequency distribution table. This is a cumulative frequency distribution. Values of x are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Values of f are given. This is 4, 7, 15, 8, 6, and 3. So, we will find out the cumulative frequencies. So, this is 4. 4 plus 7 is 11. 11 plus 15 is 26, 26 plus 8 is 34, 34 plus 6 is 40, 40 plus 3 is 43. So, our total frequency is 43. So, what we do here is here now we will calculate here n by 2 is equal to how much? n by 2 is equal to 43 by 2 that is 21.5. Now we shall look for the frequency, cumulative frequency which is just greater than 21.5 and what is it? It is 26. So we will write now Cumulative frequency just greater than n by 2 is 26. Yes, this is 26 corresponding to x equal to 3. Corresponding to x equal to 3. Therefore, therefore, what is median? Median is equal to 3. This is how we find median in case of a discrete frequency distribution. We shall take up more sums later. So, this is just for your understanding how to go for it after construction of the table. You will find n by 2. And then you will look for the cumulative frequency just greater than n by 2 and the corresponding value will give you the median value. The third form is a grouped frequency distribution or continuous frequency distribution. That is when class intervals are given along with that frequencies are given to you. If the structure is like this, say 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 
etc. All right. In such a case, we shall make use of a formula for finding median. Median is equal to L plus n by 2 minus C f by f into h. All right. This is the formula for finding median in case of a group frequency distribution where L is the lower limit, lower limit of the median class, lower limit of the median class. N we already know, N is nothing but summation F. What is CF here? CF refers to the cumulative frequency of the class, cumulative frequency of the class preceding the median class, preceding the median class, median class or agor class to cumulative frequency. I will tell you what is a median class. What is F? F is the frequency, is the frequency of the median class, median class or frequency are H to whole with H is the weight of the median class. All right. So, we have to know the formula and before application of the formula, we should know what the median class is. Yes. So, in finding median, the first important work will be to find the median class and then putting the values for finding the median of that particular distribution given to us. So again, if a class interval is given to us and frequencies are given to us for finding median, remember we always have to find the cumulative frequency. That is we have to construct the cumulative frequency distribution table. Similarly, like the previous procedure, here also we will find out all the cumulative frequencies and then find n by 2, we will calculate n by 2 and then what we do is we will again look for the cumulative frequency just greater than n by 2. The corresponding class will be the median class, alright. So if this is the median class, the frequency of that class that is F will be here, CF will be the cumulative frequency of the class preceding the median class. So, CF will be here, all right. Width implies the difference between the highest and the, sorry, the upper limit and the lower limit of the median class. So, using this formula, we can find median. So, with this, we stop here and in the next class, we shall learn about the graphical representation of median and then we will learn mode, its graphical representation and then we shall go for application that is mathematical application that is we will do sums relating to arithmetic mean, median as well as mode. So, dear students, let us revise and recapitulate what we have learned today. So, at the very beginning, we had started with the properties of arithmetic mean, the four very, very important basic properties and then we had discussed about the merits and demerits of arithmetic mean and why it is called the best measure of central tendency. And then we further moved on to median. We had an idea about partition values, quartiles, deciles and percentiles, their relationship is in with median which is very, very important for your knowledge as, as well as examination point of view and then we learnt about median in details, all the three different techniques of finding median in case of a discrete distribution and in case of a continuous distribution also. So, we hope to meet once again in the next class with the 
different other topics which we have to learn in this chapter. Thank you so much.